Thank you for joining QuiltWorks.com today for the third paper piecing tutorial required to make the Valley Blossoms quilt. Today we are working on the bridal bouquet border. This border fits the queen medallion layout for all Meadow Star mixers and can be purchased as a mixer chapter if you would like to combine it with other A and B blocks. The corner applique package can also be purchased separately and can be used on any quilt that we have designed with ample border space. Other patterns that we think would work include using this border as an alternative to the applique on the flowers for my wedding ring, or any wedding ring pattern that uses the geese square up border, the diamond wedding ring, the diamond wedding star, or any of the prismatic star queen quilts with the blank borders. We do not have all of these options for you to explore in Quiltster. But once you learn the technique for applying the applique in this video, you will see how easy it would be to adapt the applique package for a variety of designs. All you will need to, is to line up the applique on the corners and then on the two edges. If your quilt doesn't have a diagonal line from the corner, simply mark one in with a marking pin. If you are doing turn under applique, your instructional tutorial is in this video. However, if you are doing the digitized embroidery, we have brought all of these videos together into one and will be presenting it to you on July 25th, so stay tuned. If you are still trying to decide on which version of applique to use, feel free to watch all of the tutorials, then go back and select your option before you assemble the quilt. You can come back to this tutorial or the one on July 25th and complete final assembly after you've decided your preference. Let's join Judy in the classroom. Hi everyone, today we're actually going to start with session three, which is the bridal bouquet queen border. And if you look out at your quilt, you're going to see the outside border pieces where all the appliques is. And that's the section we're going to do. The other thing we're going to do is the paper piecing on these pieces right here and the paper piecing and curve piecing on those units. So when you guys open up your booklet, the very first thing you're going to do is get your bags. And we have to have four bags. I already have my bags ready and labeled. And then you're going to get all your papers cut out and all the templates cut out, which I've already done that because I didn't think you really don't wanted to watch me again. So we're going to start with, um, we have a unit D1R and a unit D1L, which are the, just a mirror image of each other. These go into bag number one. I've already sorted the templates on this batch, so I've, I've got them in order for the cutting, so we're gonna leave them over here and we're not gonna put the templates in the bags. Then we're gonna grab bag two, and in bag two we should have our template pieces, or our foundation papers for unit D2, unit D3, and unit D4. Those go into bag two. Then we have some template pieces for bag D3, and these are part of the outside brown, and we just kind of separated the two papers units. So we're going to put these in bag D3. And then I'm going to actually pick up the fabric for um, this piece and put it right here and set it aside with bag D8. On page two, at the bottom of page two, you're gonna find your color layout. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the color layout and just double check it a little bit with all of your cutting instructions. There's a lot of cutting instructions in here and you just wanna double check everything to make sure that everything pairs up properly, okay? We're not gonna go through the yardage chart because you've already cut everything out. And um, so we're going to start with fabric D1 in the cutting instructions. So I'm going to grab 
For fabric D1, there's actually two colors. Um, I'm only using one color, so I don't have to worry about the A and B um, situation. And I believe the quilt that we have on the wall, if you have the kit, also only uses one color. But you do have the option of having two colors, which if you have two colors, you're going to end up with the top, the two sides and the bottom one color, and then your four corners are going to be the second color, all right? And then you'll have to always stack fabric A on top and B on the bottom, all right? So we're going to start here, and I have fabric A, and I'm just going to put B, this is marked for fabric B, and I'm going to put it on the bottom just because we're gonna pretend like we have lots of different colors here. So we wanna open up our fabric and stack these right side up. So this is my B fabric. And I do believe that I have one strip that's for the B fabric, nope, we have to stack the A and the B fabrics together. So stack them right side up. And it shows in my graphics that I have B on the bottom and the A on the top, right? So we're just gonna finish up with the other two layers. And remember, you have instructions. You can read them, just like I have to read sometimes to figure out what needs to be done. Don't just assume that the pictures are going to tell you everything. So read your instructions and then look at your graphics, and it will help you see how it's all set up. Okay, so now we have our fabrics, and I'm going to move that little sticky label. And the two templates that go on here, it says, are the D1R template and the D1L template, okay? And, but first of all, it's going to tell me I'm supposed to cut these, subcut these strips. And I believe they're supposed to be subcut into six and a half inch um, strips. So I'm going to, now that I have this staffed, I'm just going to quickly take this and do two six and a half inch strips. We're going to grab our ruler and a rotary cutter and I'm just going to straighten them up and realize that because we're doing paper piecing, these don't have to be really accurate. You just have to have them somewhere around that six and a half inches. And it looks as if my strip right now is setting at 13 inches. So I'm going to line it up here and I'm just going to add a half an inch to my piece. And I'm going to straighten up one more little piece here. There we go. And now I'm going to add Take my six inch ruler and I'm going to add just a half an inch to it. And I'm going to cut these into two six and a half inch pieces. So now we're going to take those two pieces and we're going to open them back up together. And then we're going to take our two templates, and if I follow my graphics here, it tells me that we want to put the D1 R template on one of them, okay? And then we're going to put the D1 L template on the other one. So all of the excess fabric that we have, we're going to have to reposition because we have to cut eight pieces to go underneath this layout sheet. So it's a pretty big layout sheet, so we're gonna take our repositionable glue, and we're gonna put a bunch of glue on the back of this.
And I'm going to look at the graphics because I want to make sure I get these set up to look like the graphics. That way I can, uh, it'll be easier to move the position on my templates. So now we're going to take a rotary cutter and I'm going to take and slice just at the end of this piece like that and then I'm going to cut my first piece I'm going to slide it just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and clean off the bottom here. Right? And then I have a crack. I'm going to go back and cut where my two boards fit together. Okay. Now we want to leave that fabric together. And we have to get this piece cut loose. And I'm just going to slide the rest of my fabric up here and we're going to set the whole stack on here and get that second cut out of it. So now this is going to give me eight pieces underneath. And here again, remember we're doing paper piecing so if your pieces are just you know, they're not quite matching up. Don't worry about it because we have lots of excess room here for you to, if it's off just a little bit, your template pieces are still gonna fit just fine. I'm gonna turn the ruler. Now we have eight pieces under that one. And then we're gonna grab our paper clip Remember, we can never have enough paper clips. And I'm going to clip every one of these section pieces together. Put one paper clip on each one. Okay, and so remember what I, even though my instructions tell me to go through and cut on all my lines, if I'm not gonna sit down and do the paper piecing right now on this, then I'm just gonna fold this up and slip this into my bag one, and I'll do the, complete the cutting right before we do the paper piecing. This way I can get through all of the rest of the cutting. So we are gotta do the same Thing with this one, we got to find the end and we're just going to cut up right at the end here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And then we're going to move it to where. And now that piece is free, and then we'll just slide this up like that. I'm just going to straighten up the fabric just a touch here on this end. Okay. And then we're going to flip this piece over, set that on, and slide it down, cut the ends off. up along this edge. So again, we don't have to really worry about those individual pieces or that everything is exactly the same size. We're going to put our paper clips on. There you go. And we're going to set this one in the bag. But I am going to mention one more thing about these pieces. So as you guys go through the different templates, you're going to find sometimes the pieces are shaped 
um, a little bit closer to each other and sometimes they're not. It seems like there's a lot of waste, okay? When we're actually figuring this out, we have to figure out how many pieces we can get onto a strip. And if there's not going to be hardly anything left over from our strip, then we may allow a little bit more room when we're building our template pieces. The other thing is this is one of those shapes that's very strange to cut around. And if we cut here and then cut at the bottom, it makes it a lot more difficult to put a shape like that underneath the paper. So a lot of times when we have a shape that has a lot of angles to it, we'll just give you the angle and that excess is going to just get wasted as you go because even if I try to put all of these templates and fit these in closer, it's not going to save me hardly anything and it's going to double the time of sewing we have because we just made that difficult to put underneath our paper. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to fold this one up and we're going to slip this into bag B1. So now we're looking at the instructions for fabric D2A and fabric D2B. And we're going to look at these because it looks like we have to cut these strips. So in Quilster, it told us to cut 10 and a half inch strips, and now it's going to tell us that we need to cut these at five and a half inches as well. But I'm going to open up and stack them and then fold them back like I did the last one to get my cuts. The reason why we didn't tell you to cut all of them as five inches is we have to pay attention a little bit when we're figuring yardage to make sure you guys can't split. So if I had said you can cut all five inch strips, then Quilster would allow you to go in and color each one of those strips a different color, and then your pieces wouldn't come together. So sometimes we have to determine and put two or three templates together, and so we only tell you what size to cut that, and then you have to come back to your instructions and continue and do some subcutting. So that's what we're doing right now, is we're going to subcut these into our five inch strips. And I have to subcut um, this one as well. So I'm just going to stack them on top like this. And we're going to quickly subcut those. And it says those need to be cut at 5 inches. So before I just sit down and cut, I'm going to measure them and make sure that I did get my strips cut the right size, and they are. So now I can just take this, and I'm going to cut two 5-inch strips. And here again, I'm not going to worry if they don't match up perfectly, because I know that it's going to all fit together. Now we're going to stack all of these strips and open them up. And we're going to put four strips in each stack and they're going to be facing right side up I'm going to do the other stack all right i i have the five inch strips cut and stacked and now we need to find our template pieces for unit d1r and it's template layout sheet number three goes on the top one, it says, and template layout sheet number four goes on the bottom one. And remember, if we were cutting these with two different fabric colors, we would have the B fabrics on the bottom, the A fabrics on the top. So now I'm going to put some repositionable glue on the back of my template pieces. So these are a little bit easier to cut. So 
then all I have to do is just come in and cut this angle here. And then I'm going to cut this angle. And I'm going to pick this piece up, move my pieces, put it on like this. Then I'm going to cut this angle. And I'm not going to worry about it being a perfect cut. But I am going to actually get rid of my salvage. Because sometimes if I leave that salvage on, I'll line a piece up to it. And then I sew it into the quilt. And I don't like sewing the salvage pieces into the quilt. Okay, so then we have eight pieces under there. We're going to flip this piece around. And we're going to line this one up. That's looking pretty good. And then we'll just cut off this end. And we'll throw those salvage away and we'll keep these little pieces because they might help us if we make a cutting mistake somewhere. All right, so now we're gonna grab our paper clips. Okay, I have all the clips on, so I'm just gonna set these back into, place them in bag D1 so that they're ready for me to cut. And then we're gonna continue on with another bag. So I have my fabric for, this is my D3 fabric, and we're quickly gonna go through the instructions. I'm supposed to have four 10 and three quarter inch strips, and it looks like I do. And it says I'm gonna stack them all facing right side up. And then I have my template layout sheet is number five, which is this one right here. All right. And I have to have, it looks like, I have to have a total of eight pieces and I get two cuts out of my strip. So after I cut one, group, then I have to cut, move the templates and cut the other one. Now, one thing I will show you is, see, this will actually fit on my stack like that. But if I had solid fabrics that didn't have a right or a wrong side, I could go ahead and cut them all up without having to open up my strips. But this fabric changes just a little bit, so we're going to open up the strips and stack them this way. And this will put all of the fabrics facing right side up. And it looks like, it looks like I have to, I'm going to need a little bit of this. So I can't just cut it in half like I thought I could. I'm looking at my cutting instructions. That's telling me, no, Judy, you are wrong. So I'm going to go press because I need to get this wrinkle out. We're going to put our glue on the back of it. We're going to dry just a little bit. And then I'm going to position that piece on there just like that. And then I'm going to cut it right up this side here. And then I need to turn and cut here. Okay. Then I'm going to flip this, move it here. And I'm going to pull that in there like that.
we're going to put our paper clips on. We're going to fold this piece up and slide this one in bag two. Fabric D4 told me I need two four and a half inch strips. And I'm just going to quickly measure, and that's what we're setting at two four and a half. And then I have to have a template D2 2 and D4 2. So I'm going to set my templates over here, and I have a D2 2. And a D4-2. And it looks like I have to use one strip for each one. So we're just going to take this. We're going to open up each one of these strips. I'm going to put some glue on the back. And so this is a single template, so you're going to have to reposition your pieces more often. So we're going to take this one, set it like that. And I'm looking at my picture, <clears throat> and I have quite a bit of fabric left over, so I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to put this other one right next to it, upside down. And then I'm gonna cut a section. And that template's gonna stick to my board, but that's okay. okay. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And and take this template off, put it upside down. And then pull it off. Okay, so now all I have to do here, put my template back on. Got a little snag there. And this gives me two pieces. So now, then I have to have eight, so this will give me four pieces right here. So we're gonna cut right along the edge of that fabric. This is gonna give me six pieces. Uh, this is going to give me eight pieces. And now that I have all of that, then I'm going to just cut right along this line. Take these pieces and flip them underneath. And now I have eight pieces. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here. So. Now, if you like to be conservative with fabric, you do have the right, since it is your fabric, if you want to finish cutting up that strip, then go ahead and cut it up. I'm just going to leave it and use this strip. So we have another one. And then we'll just set these aside in case we make mistakes. And I'm gonna cut right down the edge of that paper, flip these pieces, put them underneath. Put our paper clip, and then these are gonna go back, or they're gonna go into bag D2. We are now to fabric D5. And D5 is supposed to be a four and a half inch strip. 
and it is a four and a half inch strip. Um, it also uses template D23 and D24. So there's my D23 and D24 template. I'm gonna put some repositionable glue on it. Then it tells me to open my strips. And as I'm looking at these strips, it's actually showing me that I can cut this right in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and just slice this fabric right in the middle. And now that I've got two pieces under each stack, so we're going to place this one here and this here. So this piece is going to go on here like this, and then it has to be flipped over like this, like this, and like this. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I did on the last one. I'm going to use my reverse template and cut, and there's not a lot left over on these, so I have to be pretty accurate with that cut. And now I'm going to take this piece, flip it over. Oh, we had plenty left over. And then I'm going to cut right down this edge here. And then we're going to cut on this piece. And I'm going to stack those eight pieces under this template here. Now I'm going to borrow my template for my other one. So this one is going to be on here like this. And then I'm going to flip this one upside down so that I can get the angle. the edge. Now I'm going to put this template back with this group. Put a paper clip on it. A paper clip that works. Now I'm going to take this. We're going to flip the whole piece over. And now we're going to cut right along that angle. And then I'm going to cut this end off here. And then we just move these, put them on top, and that gives me eight of these pieces. And those go into bag two. This is fabric D6, and I should have two strips, and I do. And this template is cut from, these pieces are cut from D32, which is this one. And I have to have, I'm going to go ahead and cut my salvage off. And this fabric doesn't have a right and a wrong side, so I'm just going to cut these like this. And I have to cut eight pieces. So we're going to cut our first piece like this one. Flip this over, 
and cut this one. And that's left over. And I didn't put any glue on that, so I'm going to glue it so it'll stay with my pieces. This one goes in bag two. So now we have fabric D7. And it says I should have two six inch strips. And I do. All right? And we need to, it looks like I can go ahead and cut these right at the center. And since this fabric doesn't have a right and a wrong side to it, I can just take my template. I have four layers now. And that's going to sit on there just like that. And then I'm just going to cut along the edge. And then we're going to cut along the edge of this one. We're going to put our paper clips on it. And put this in the bag D2. Okay, we're on fabric D8 now. Um, the instructions for D8 says, step one, cut two 34 and a half inch by 42 inch strips. That's the strip size that Quilster told you to cut. Then you have to subcut these strips into what it tells you to. So the next step it says, then subcut each strip into two sets of two 14 inch strips and one set of two six and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna cut two 14 inch strips from this, from each fabric. So we're gonna go, here's 14. Then I'm gonna move my ruler over, cut 14 again. is right here. And I'm guessing that that's going to leave me with a six and a half inch strip. And yes, it does. My fabric was a little bit longer because I probably just cut a little bit longer. Okay, so now I have two sets. Each one of these has two pieces in it. And then we have a strip here that's a little bit bigger than the six and a half, which we don't have to trim it down. It's just fine, all right? Now we're gonna go press it. Okay, I've pressed my fabric really nice, and the reason I wanted to press it is because you have that fold in there in your batik, so you wanna make sure to use your pressing um, a starch to get rid of that. And then what we wanna do is, this is the first one, and it says the D1R template, and then we need the D3R template. And remember, we're gonna use our repositionable glue on the back, and I've already put it onto my big piece. And I want to look at the way that layout is set up on here. And it looks like to me it's going to be a little bit better if I start on this side and move this piece over because I want to match the way it's set up on that picture. If I don't, I'm not going to get these two pieces cut out of this this fabric. So I want to move this over and I don't want to put it on the salvage. So once I get it in position, I'll move it down just a hair. 
And then it tells me to put this piece underneath it. And you can kind of see the way the grain line on this piece is setting right here. And we're going to lay that down right like this. Okay. Now I'm not going to cut that piece out first. I'm going to cut this one out because that's a big one. And then I'm going to move the big one. I just wanted to get this positioned correctly so that I know that I can fit it on. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of excess room. I'm not going to cut it to the exact size yet. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here, cut it just a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to get rid of some of that excess there. Now it wants me to take this piece and we're going to move it over and we're going to position it and move it up as close to the top as we can. Aha, we got lots of room there. Okay, get that positioned. And then I'm gonna cut along the edge. And I'm gonna cut right along this piece here. I'm probably gonna have to do another cut because my board split there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my piece here and I'm going to make sure that I have this centered on here to where I can get a nice cut out of it. And then I'm going to rough cut around this piece. And then we're going to set that aside and we'll come back and finish cutting this. So I'm going to cut my straight seams first. Okay, we have my curved ruler and I'm going to use that curved ruler to finish cutting all the way around. Remember, I have four pieces underneath this. straight ruler. I have another straight line. Okay. I'm going to grab this one. So we have four pieces, and this is temp T template D1R. It's cut very accurately. And now the next step you have to do is to sew those TRP lines on this. And remember, this is one of those where if you're using a batik, you should be able to just stitch the line without your needle in it, and then take a good look at it. And if you can see it, you're probably gonna be okay with it. If you can't see it very well, then go ahead and go back and stitch it. But first I would try just using my, my needle with no thread, all right? We're gonna set this one aside. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna cut these four pieces. This is an outside curve, so I'm just rolling the curve out as I'm cutting along the edge. 
and then I have to cut the end, and I'm going to use my straight ruler for that. Get that cut out. Cut that one, and then I'm going to come back, check all of my smart corners. And some of these don't have much of a cut around those corners, but you'll find if you look at it and go, oh, I don't need to cut that. When you go to set it up, it may be off just a little bit. So if you'll actually cut those little teeny smart corners that Bradley has printed on those, it lines up perfectly to the piece underneath it when you start actually sewing. Okay, and then we'll cut our curve. Right, we have those four done. Okay, now we're at step four. And these are our smaller strips. I have them pressed. And I've got to put my glue on the back of these. We're supposed to cut four pieces with each template. We have two layers of fabric. And we're going to position our templates exactly the way it shows on the picture. So there's my first template. And actually my D2 is supposed to flip like this. So I'm just going to flip my this one over because they're the same size to get an idea where my center is. And then I'm going to fold my fabric and it does come right out at the center fold. So I'm going to cut my piece like this. And then we're going to take the D2R template and we're going to position it onto this piece. All right. So now I'm going to take and slice right along the edge of it. And I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch excess there. And then I can just flip this piece over and stack it so that I have four pieces underneath it. Then we're going to take this piece. I'm going to do the same thing with it. And then I'm going to stack that. That puts four pieces under each one of those. And I don't think you guys need to watch me cut these out. The next step after we cut these out is step five. And I'm just going to show you on step five. It's actually done exactly the same as the first step, other than we have the templates going in the opposite direction. So I have my big piece here. I'm going to come in and rough cut around this piece. Then I'm going to move it over onto this half and so that I have four pieces underneath it and then we'll cut four pieces out for this one as well. And that's our cutting instructions. Don't forget to sew all the TRP lines on these pieces because these are your biggest pieces in your quilt and you're going to need to have those marks. So you need to stitch them and if you can't, don't if you can't see them very well, then go ahead and just use your thread and stitch each layer singly. Fabric D9, the cutting instructions for that are for your T templates, a D4R, D5R, and then there's a D5L and a D4L, a D6R and a D6L, all right? Um, you should have those in your bag. Um, it starts out, Quilster told you to cut a 30 and one half inch strip, and now we have to sub cut this one as well. We have four layers here, because it says we needed four. So I'm gonna cut two sets of the nine and a half inch strips. That's gonna give me eight nine and a half inch strips. And then I'm gonna cut a four, four 11 and a half inch strips, all right? So we're going to measure nine and a half inches. And then 
we're gonna cut another nine and a half inch group. And that's gonna put me right here. I'm gonna set those off to the side. And then the next piece is supposed to be the 11 and a half inch strip. And we have a little bit left over here because I always cut big because I can. Sometimes you can't because you don't have enough fabric, but I always have enough fabric, so I always cut a little bit big if I know I'm okay with it. So this one's supposed to be 11 and a half inches. And I'm not going to trim it down because it's just fine, all right? So on my first set of nine and a half inch strips, I want to cut a T template D4R, which is right here, and then a D5R. Okay, so I'm going to move these off to the side. We're going to open this up. And when I talk about opening your fabrics and stacking them, all I mean is just open them to where you have a single layer and then stack them as best you can. When we figure out how to put these strips on, we try to give you some a little bit of extra room so that you have the ability to play around on how you fit your fabrics. And most fabrics run between 42 inches and 44 inches. On occasion, you'll find some fabrics that'll be around 41, but that doesn't happen too often anymore. All right, I have those set up. I have my templates here, and I'm gonna get my instructions out. And it wants me to put this template over here. And remember, we're cutting four of each one of these pieces because we have four sides to our quilt. So I'm going to position that one right there. And then we'll put our glue, repositionable glue. Remember, we don't want to use a fabric glue. You want the repositionable. And let it dry just a little bit. And then it doesn't stick to the fabric. And if you get any little chunks on it, you might want to wipe those little chunks off. And I'm going to move this one, I think we're good right here. And just move it over to this end. Right there, like that. Okay, so that one's a little bit tighter fit than the other one. So just double check to make sure you have fabric under both sides of it. And then we're going to cut those pieces apart. And I'm not going to cut them out for you guys. I'll cut them out when we're not on the video. All right? So we have those as a set. Then we have to open up the other pieces. Okay, we have our next set right here. And we need templates D5L. And then we need T-template D4L. And I'm going to position D4L on this edge. And then I'm going to move this piece over. And I can play a little bit with this one. Again, we'll just quickly cut that and stack these pieces. Now the next piece here, we're going to take, open it up. Okay, we have our biggest pieces sitting here. And I have four of them stacked and I just need to have Cut four pieces for each one. And 
And then I'm gonna move this one over past that fold just because then I don't have to deal with the fold of the fabric and all the pressing. All right. And Now I'm gonna cut all of the pieces and I'll show you what they look like when they're cut. We're working on unit D1L and D1R. I've already cut the pieces for D1R here. But one of the things I want to explain to you is when you have a piece that's this long, um, the way we set up the cut lines is we try to set them up to where the largest number is the first one you're going to cut off. And that way when we go back, by the time we get through cutting, we have them all stacked in the right order. So the largest number on this particular block is D1L19. So we're going to go to cut line one. So we're going to place the rotary cutter right here on cut line one. And I'm using my add a quarter ruler because I have the um, paper clips there and it just balances. It's just basically at the right height to keep my add a quarter flat. And as I go through this, we're just going to go and set this up in order. take both stacks here and starting at the bottom of each stack we're going to restack these two pieces together and because one of them is the background and the other one is the spikes and we're going to start with section 19 and we're going to set the sew side there then we're going to go to section 18 then we go to 17 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, oops, section 2 is right here, and section 1. And now my pieces are all stacked. So the other trick I want to show you is if you know you're not going to get all of this paper piecing done before you leave it, which is pretty unlikely for most of us, because that's there's a lot of paper piecing on these. And I like to just take and clip these together with a big binder clip so that the only ones that aren't uh, clipped together are the ones that we're actually working on and it just saves us from everything being moved around and if they fall on the floor or something comes up but now we still have everything in order it's a lot easier to put a whole group in order and there we go so I'm just going to push those back out of the way and we're going to start with our very first piece. And remember if, we're, if you need to test one, then just pull the fabric off the bottom, slip it onto the top of your piece like that, 
and then you're going to start. So this is the very first one here we're going to find is section one. Now sometimes it's difficult to figure out where to put um, your fabric. And one of the things that happens when we set up our template layout sheets is we have a lot of things basically fussy cut across the strip. So when you sew it together, all your grain and if you have any kind of a design, that's all going to um, lay in the same direction. Well, the first piece always has a whole bunch of excess um, fabric on it because it just kind of fills in the last spot on your layout sheet. So to figure out exactly where to set that up, what I like to do is take my template and I'll actually go to a light source like a window and I'll line that template and match it up by simply putting it at the light and then I can see exactly where that's been set on there so that it'll stay with the same grain line as what the rest of my pieces are designed for. Then when I get that done, then I just lay that first piece down. And now we're going to flip the very first one wrong side up. And all I have to do now is grab my glue stick. And I'm going to take the very first one, find that section one. And then I'm just going to match these pieces just like this. And then we're going to take our next piece and we have to flip it over so it's wrong side up. This way I know that all of my pieces are going to be set in the same exact position with the grain line. And we just keep going. After we get to the bottom, I'm only going to do four of these right now to get us started. After we get done with our stack, then I reach underneath, put the last piece on top, and set it up just like that. So if you're chain piecing all eight, then you don't have to put any clips back on it. And now we're just going to take that and flip it upside down, all right? So now that we've got you started, then we're going to take this and we're going to put our full template on line one, which is right here, and we're going to fold back. So the other thing that you're going to run into when you're working with these long pieces is if you just have a short fold template, you're always going to have little tears and stuff getting created in there. So I like to get a longer one that's the length of my paper. And then I just lay this down and we're going to trim. Then we're going to set this piece aside and we're going to do that again. Get that folded. The other thing I like to do is have a garbage can right beside me. So as I'm trimming off all this excess, I can actually throw it right into the garbage can. Keeps my table clean as I'm working. And on occasion I miss the garbage can, but most of the time it gets pretty good. Okay, we're gonna trim one more piece. And then I'm going to just roll down and or we're going to just do one. And I'm going to do the first couple pieces for you on it. I'm going to set these extras aside here. Now we're going to grab the very bottom piece off of my stack. I'm going to keep, put my finger on my sew side so I know where the sew side is. And then we're going to line that piece right up with the sew side. Now, on this piece, you're going to want to pay attention 
to where the point is. And so one of the things you can do is grab your marking pencil and outline that point there so that when you fold that back, you can see where that point is that you have to have fabric underneath that point. So the other thing you're gonna pay attention to is where the next line is gonna be. And that's gonna be, cause I'm putting, yep, it's gonna be right there. So I'm folding back on line two, the dashed line on line two. And that tells me that I have to have fabric down here. So we have plenty of fabric cause I have about an inch left over here and I have about an inch left over here. So you have to kind of fold some paper to get those first few pieces started on some foundation papers. So now I'm gonna take my glue pen. And the nice thing about chain piecing is once you find the position of the first one, it's just a copycat. You just set everything up and you just follow what the very first one looks like. Then I'm going to take that one and flip it over, and we're going to turn on my machine, and we're going to sew on line one. And then I'm just going to finger press this. And then we're going to find line two. And we're going to fold back. And trim. We're going to grab the fabric for section three, and I'm going to pull it off the bottom. And this is my sew side. So I'm going to place it just like that match up the sew side and I'm going to make sure that I have fabric on both ends and then we're just going to grab a glue pick that up so the other thing that you're going to find that's annoying when you start working with some of these big pieces is sometimes this gets in the way and depending on how you set it up at your machine I like to try to put the long piece out here but on occasion you're going to find that it works better for you to go it this way. So what I do is when I have a lot of these long pieces like that, I like to take this and basically fold this up to the width of my machine opening. And then we just put paper clips on it. So when I'm stacked, when I have them all stacked like this, then this piece isn't gonna hang over the edge. And so now if I open it up this way, it's gonna run through my machine. If I put it through this way, it's gonna run through my machine, okay? Those are your tips for today on this particular unit. And anything, anytime you work with another pattern that has really long pieces, this is one of the best tips is to get that folded up so that you can manage your pieces. Okay, we're gonna work on the pieces in bag D2. And basically, bag D2 has three units in it. And so all of the paper uh, template pieces need to be sorted for each unit. So when I, my unit D2, if you read each one of these little numbers on here, you're gonna pair it up to that same number on one of the templates. So you're gonna have to study those a little bit. And there's a lot of D2, D2, and D4s, and D4s, and so you're gonna have to focus just a little bit because it's really easy to put it on the wrong spot. All right? So I have a D2 template, a D3, or a D2 foundation paper, and I have to put my D2 templates with it. I have D3 foundation paper, and those templates are gonna say D3, and then we have a D4 foundation paper, and those are gonna all say D4 on them, all right? So once we get those numbers matched up. So here's my template layout sheet, and this template layout sheet has the pieces for all three units, all right? So as we cut, we're gonna read and see where the pieces go. So I'm on cut line one, 
And this says it's for D41, so that's going to go with this one. Now we're going to cut the next line. And this one says it's for D4, so that goes with that. And cut line three. And this one's a D3. The other thing I'll bring to your attention is on this uh, particular foundation or uh, template layout sheet, sometimes you can just run all the way through and it doesn't matter where you start cutting. But on something like this, you have to cut in order because some of the cut lines go underneath an extra piece. So you have to look at your template layout sheets and follow your lines before you start cutting because that will tell you whether something is going to be cut over another piece, and if it is, then the cut line number is going to change. So this is my D3, Section 1. And this one here is D2. That's Section 4. And this is D2, Section 1. And here's another one of those strange pieces that it's really hard to figure out where to set it up. So we're actually going to have to hold that and I'll have to take it to a window to make sure I match that perfectly up with my section. So now that I have um, these pieces cut, I also have these little curved pieces here, right? So we're going to grab my cur curved ruler. And I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to cut on cut line one. Right? And I'm actually going to cut this part off as well, because this is my sew side. So I need to cut right along the inside of that piece right there. And then this one says it's for D4, so that goes with that group. This one goes with D3. And so this is my last one, and we're going to go ahead and cut the curve on this because the less fabric we have on a curved template piece, the easier it is to actually work with that template. So now we're going to clip these together. And I'm going to complete one piece because I want to show you how to do the curved piecing. So we're going to set these aside. This this one over here, and then we're going to do this piece right here. Now, I'm going to find my last largest number on here, section 4 is the largest one. Um, actually, section 5 is, which this is the sew side for section 5. Then we're going to put section 4. Then we're going to find section 3, and section 2, and section 1. You will be making eight of these pieces. Now, remember I said I was going to have to go to the window to figure out where to position this. Actually, I can see through the lines just fine by looking up. And there we go. So now I'm going to take this piece, flip it wrong side up, and 
Actually, I already had it flipped wrong side up. Now my fabric matches my template. And I'm going to grab one more of these. And we're going to put some glue, just a little bit of glue under section one. Now all I have to do is just match up my paper because I cut it all together. And that's going to position that piece exactly the way I want. If you guys can see what I'm talking about. So now I can just remove the stuff off the bottom to get the other started later. Okay. So we're actually going to place this on line one. And we're gonna fold that on line one, put our out of border ruler on, and then we're gonna trim. This is my sew side right here. So on this piece, it, when I place this on, it looks like, oh, it's not big enough. But remember, we can't see the bottom of that line. So one of the things I do if I didn't mark the back, then I can come back in and I can crease the paper on the dashed line of the next line that I'm going to sew on. Now when I fold it back, I can see where that crease is. And I'm going to mark it for you so you know what I'm talking about. So now I have that marked at the bottom. Now I know where the bottom of my piece is and I can actually lay it exactly underneath it. And it's the right size. So we're going to quickly sew that one. press it. The other thing I'm going to do is, and I do this a lot when I'm sewing, I look at the TRP lines and if I can actually sew that TRP line, I'll go ahead and sew it now so that when I get done I don't have 10 of them that I have to sew at the same time. So right after I sew that seam and I press and I can come back and I can run through my stack and sew that first TRP line. And it just saves me having to go back and sew a hundred of them when I'm done. So we have one of the TRP lines already sewn. Now we're going to go to the next piece here, which is going to be line two. We're going to fold back. Remember I showed you the other day how when you sew past the line that you have to tear that so that your fabric will lay down. And it's written in all of the instructions. We take all the instructions to that point where it tells you where you to tear that line back, the paper away from that so that you can fold the paper back. Now we're going to grab the bottom off of this piece and my sew side is this one right here. And I'm going to position that underneath there like that. I'm going to sew on the line.
going to go to line three. position it and don't just set it along the top remember you have a whole line here because that's a whole other section so you need to put your finger down at the bottom there because if, if you put it right up to the top your piece won't be long enough so pay attention when you're positioning this one I need to go up just a little bit more there we go Now, I didn't glue this piece. As you can see, I'm going to hold on to it as I go. And by doing that, I have to, I can never take my hand off of it or that piece is going to move under the bottom. And after I start sewing, I have to double check and keep it lined up as I go. If you just let the feed dogs take it, it's going to take the paper one direction and the fabric the other. So you've got to hold on to that. So the next piece that you're going to put on, there's a couple tricks that you need to know about. Now, this one is section 5, D25, so it does go right here. Uh, something that we've started doing about a month ago, and so your papers don't have this, but we found if we actually sewed the TRP line on this um, little bias strip or accent strip, whatever we want to call it, we can, it's easier to work the so that the, do the curved paper piecing. So what I would like you guys to do in here, because your papers aren't gonna have that line on there, you're actually going to take this and line your template up basically along the back side of that. All right? So that you can see what it actually, where it fits. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just You just need to make sure that it's going to fit. And then you're going to fold the paper on the TRP line so that you know where the location is on the paper. All right? So now that I know where that location is, I'm going to just take this piece and put it back on my fabric, and I'm going to sew a line right along the folded edge of that paper. And it's, like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be somewhere in the center of it. So once you sew one, you can just go through and fold them all just basically the same way, all right? And you're going to sew all those TRP lines on that piece. So after we get that TRP line sewn, now we're going to come over and we have to sew a basting line on the, the um, our unit here. And it does tell you basting stitch line 4, and it talks about it in the instructions. So read your instructions closely, and then watch the video, and you'll figure this out. It's a very cool way to add accent strips to any type of a unit. So what I'm going to do is sew on my basting stitch line, and I think I'm going to just go up a little bit. Okay. Now you can see where the basting stitch line is on here. So now all I have to do is take my piece and I'm going to find the TRP line on the back of the paper and just crease it. Now I know exactly where my center is. I just have a little fold line there. 
and I'm going to line that TRP line up with that. So we're going to take my glue pin and I'm going to put the glue just to the inside of the basting stitch, which that should be where your seam allowance is. So you don't want your glue to be too far. You've got to keep it within the seam allowance. So it's about a quarter of an inch. And then all I have to do is just come along here and roll this around. And the template's bigger than we need because we're doing paper piecing. So that's why I said it. you don't have to be perfect with that center. This one's going to go on really easy. Now I'm going to do the other edge. And you don't stretch it. Just get that to lay down like that. Now I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to go to the iron and what I'm going to do is place the steam iron just above it a little bit and have that steam that down. My steam iron and I'm just going to steam this edge just a little bit. And what that's doing is flattening and steaming down where my quarter inch line is going to be. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the sewing machine. So I'm going to show you two ways and um, how to build, um, do them, sew this on. All right. The first way and the easiest way to do it is to actually take and just put your foot down here and follow the edge of the foot along your basting stitch because that's where your quarter inch is. So if I didn't, if I wasn't sewing this on, that's where the top of my curve would be trimmed. And then I can just sew this on. Now that's works really, really good unless you have to match these. And this is one, these blocks, you actually have to have a perfect sew line on those um, curves. So what I found is I can actually flip this over and I can sew right on the line. So I'm going to just start sewing on my line and I'm going to do this slowly. I want to put my needle down. Okay, so now it's going to stop. Now, if I just put my hands on a sew, I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of puckers from that bias strip under there. So I'm going to lift it and I'm going to put my hand and hold my paper up. And I'm going to slowly sew. And then every once in a while, I'm going to just readjust just a little bit and make sure that that fabric isn't folding underneath there. And what's neat about this is the feed dogs are trained to pull that bias in, and, and it will. And you'll end up with a perfect curved seam on these papers by doing it this way. I'm just going to make sure I don't have any puckers in any of that and it did a really nice job. Now we're going to come back and trim that but we have to press it and trim the whole piece first. I have my TRP line on my black so we're going to go back and steam this down at the ironing board. So we're going to take our steam iron and I'm just going to kind of press that a little bit. Then we're going to grab our pin here and we're going to run that pin right along that curved seam. And that's going to starch that seam down. So when we start to assemble these pieces, if I'm right on the line and I have this press, I'm not going to have any pleats at all or folds. And I'm going to have a perfect line there to match up. Okay, so before we do any trimming of this other piece, we have to cut this template down to the exact size. So we're going to trim around the outside edge of it. Go through and do all your straight lines first. Now we're going to find our curved ruler. 
And I'm gonna lay it right along. And then we're gonna trim the top. piece done except that we don't want all of this excess fabric under here so I'm going to actually pull this back and I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to trim right along the inside of that basting stitch so see how I just cleaned that off so if I was working with light fabrics that basting stitch will actually shadow through on your fabric and you'll see it when you start doing your machine quilting. So I like to get rid of it. So now when I look at the back, see how my, my accent strip is now longer than my paper. We're just gonna leave the paper on until we're ready to do our assembling because once you remove the paper, you no longer know what that unit is. And when you start assembling a large quilt, you need to know what the units are, especially when they're left and right units, because it tells you the position on how to assemble those. I'm going to go over how to assemble your border pieces, all right? So when I assemble a quilt, I like to get all of my pieces stacked together on my table. So that I can just pick them up and it keeps me, if I'm going back and forth to the wall and pulling them off one at a time from the wall, I usually end up putting something in the wrong place. So I like to get them all stacked exactly the way they're supposed to be sewn. So the first thing we're actually going to sew is this piece and this one. Alright, so we're going to move this out of the way. And I actually just used a needle and I did a needle punch on my TRP lines. So I'm actually able to see exactly where those TRP lines go. Alright, so we're going to take this piece. And it looks like I already sewed this one on. I didn't realize I'd sewn that one too many pieces on. So. We did sew this one on already, so I'm just going to show you the curve piecing on that one. So the first thing I like to do is just take and put a little bit of glue right by that TRP line, and I'm going to match my TRP lines first. And the closer I match those, the better this is going to fit. Okay? Then we're going to run over here to the edge, and I'm going to glue and match my smart corner and that should just be perfect around there and after I get that done then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along that edge and work that back and it just comes out and fits perfectly along there. Now we're going to do the other side so we're going to do the glue along this corner here get that fit so it fits in there perfectly, and then I'm just going to work it back to the TRP line. So whenever I'm doing a curve, I like to be able to start in the center, and then do my work back to the center, and work back to the center to make that piece fit. Alright? So, now we're going to go to the sewing machine. And when I'm sewing with light batiks, and I'm doing curves, I like to be able to start on a little piece of paper, so I'm just going to tear off a little piece of paper and I'm going to bring my needle up, my thread up through it and get started sewing right on the paper. And I'm going to make sure my stitch length, and I like to set my stitch length at about two on this machine that I'm using. And now I'm going to take this and all I have to do is just lay that fabric right on the paper and then just keep sewing on the paper and I can line it right up to the edge of my quarter inch foot and I don't have to worry about my machine pulling that edge of that because it's really this fabric's pretty lightweight and 
I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. read my instructions and on my newsprint that I'm actually using to assemble this it tells me which pieces go which and it's going to have some dashed lines there and I'm going to do all of the pressing according to what's on that newsprint. Now I will tell you that if you don't like the way I pressed it, it's okay. Just press it the way you want to do it, but whatever you do in their pressing, if you change your, my instructions to press it a different way because your fabrics might be different colors and it, some of your lights might be light, some of your darks, it might be reverse of mine, then mark it on that newsprint piece so that when you go back to do them all, you'll remember how you actually pressed it. All right, so there's our next piece. Now the next piece we're going to add on is this piece. Okay. And again, I'm going to find my TRP lines. And I have one here and one here. And I'm just going to take and put a little bit of glue along that, those edges on both of those TRP lines. And we're going to mark, match that one. And then we're going to come in and we're going to match this one. Once I get that matched. And I'm going to run my glue along those edges back there. And then we're going to do the same thing on this. Now notice that I took my glue right out to this point right here because I want to make sure that that point <clears throat> has glue all the way down to it like that. Now I'm going to flip that over so you can see where I've actually glued. When I start doing my sewing, I'm actually going to come right off here at a quarter inch line and that should hit right on that tip right there when I sew that seam. I put my needle down while we start this one. Now I'm going to lay this way down here like this. And I'm going to start sewing. And I'm going to roll that around because I'm supposed to hit that tip and the tip's underneath on the bottom. check that to see where that came out and looking at it I didn't quite hit that tip but I'm going to show you a little trick so that I don't have to go back and sew it before I go to the ironing board I can actually come in here and put just a little bit of glue on this and then what I do is I fold that back so that that tip falls straight and just kind of, and now it's glued there. And then I get that so that I have this nice straight line along here. So even though I didn't get it right on the, t the, the threads right on the tip, I'm still able to just put a little bit of glue there and get that press that the direction it needs to be. Now before you do that, you want to make sure that the, your pattern is actually telling you to press that way because if it's telling you to press the opposite way, which it may, 
then you would want to put that turn it the opposite way, but you'll still get the same effect of getting a straight line there, all right? Okay, remember we have a glue pin here where these are all curved seams before we go to the iron. You're going to check your instructions, and my instructions are actually telling me that I'm going to be pressing this the opposite way is what I thought. So we're going to take this and loosen this up where I glued it. That's why you want to have your instructions next to you. And instead of putting my glue there and folding it back, I'm going to put a little bit of glue underneath that and get that positioned so it's nice and straight that way. And I like to glue down those edges just right along the edge of the seam. You don't want to glue the whole piece. Now, we're going to, remember I showed you guys how to use your glue pins where these are all curved seams. We're going to come in here before we go to the iron. And we're just going to rub these, this starch, right around along that curved edge. And then we're going to take that to the iron and we're going to press that. When you're done, you're going to have a piece and all of them are going to be pressed the same exact way, looking just like that. Okay, on page 9 I'm going to assemble the first half of my border piece. And so I have it all set in right here. And we're going to make sure that we have all four of our pieces stacked here so we can assemble them as we go. And the first two pieces that it tells me that I'm supposed to assemble, and I'm just going to move them out of the way here a little bit and move the pieces over that we need so you can see them. And then this one's going to go here. This one's going to go like this. Set the rest of these on the floor for now. So now we, you can see what we have to do. And in my instructions, it tells me that I have to assemble this piece onto here and this piece onto here. All right? And then when you turn the page, then it tells me that we assemble these pieces together. After that, then this piece goes on to that, and then we assemble these two, and then we join the whole thing. And we do have an S-curve, so we're going to put the very first piece together. We're going to grab our glue. We're going to match, put the glue right where the TRP line is, and we're going to match our TRP lines. Okay. And then we're going to... Bring it over to the edge, we're going to match the edge, and then work that down like that. You should have a perfect fit. And if for some reason it doesn't fit perfectly, glue it along the edges straight, make sure your TRP lines are straight, and then take an, a steam iron to it and just steam right along that edge. and it'll shrink that back down to where it's supposed to fit because you are working with bias pieces here. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to put my glue here and make sure you don't get anything flipped upside down if you're using batiks because these will sew on backwards and then when you go to try to assemble them you'll notice that you have your pieces wrong because the curve is the same size on both edges. Okay, so do the other side. And after I get that, 
I like to double check just to make sure I don't do it wrong and I have that correct and this one's correct as well. All right now we're going to run those through. I'm going to take a little piece of paper piece and just chain it right behind the first one. I'm going to cut the pieces apart. And then I'm going to take these to the iron for iron, I'm going to use my starch pen. The other thing I want to do before I iron is double check and make sure that I'm pressing them in the right direction. And in my instructions, there's some little dashed lines and some arrows that tell you, plus it's written if you can't see the arrows then you can read that. And it's telling me that I want to press towards T-template D2R and D1R. So I'm going to press them into that direction. Now I'm going to flip the page. And on this page it tells me to sew these two pieces together. And then it tells me to join these two pieces. So we're going to set this piece aside, and these are easy. I'm just going to flip them like this and make sure it's right. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue down on this corner, and a little bit of glue right there. That's all bias edge, and so it's going to stretch on me. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the edges to secure them. And I'm going to sew that one really quick. starch pin down there and that tells me to press to this direction so I'll just finger press that for now and now we're going to press these so these ones together And this is going to be a match that's a little bit difficult to make, and so I'm going to show you some tricks on how I make that work. I like to press everything going out so that I'm going to have stacked seams when I'm doing big curves like that, because I like my seams to all be pressed in the same direction when I do my quilting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on here like this, and I'm going to put some glue on the piece that's on the bottom and then I'm going to flip the top piece and I'm going to tuck that in as if I was doing opposing seams right there. Right? Then I'm going to check the top one and I'm going to go a little bit further with my glue and I'm going to fold that seam back and tuck that in as if I was doing opposing seams and then glue up just a little ways. So you're going to have these seams kind of flipping this way for just a, until we sew, but we're not going to sew them down that way. All right? Now we're going to come down here and we're going to take a look at this seam 
And these are actually stack seams as well. And we're going to put a little note in your instructions because in our instructions, one of these foundation sheets, and I'm not sure which one it is, says you're supposed to repress that seam. But after I started making it, I realized that I can't repress the seam because it's already sewn. And I don't want to come in and try to undo, pick any stitches here and repress because it's not that important. We can do a stack seam really easy. And so we're just going to take this. What I like to do is fold this back and see where that's going to match. And if I get, once I get a perfect match at a quarter of an inch right here, and you can eyeball that and see how it makes a little bit, bit of a V, then I can put some glue on both sides of that, and I can actually just flip that over, and now I'm going to have a match on that. We're going to put glue down here at the bottom. Have our smart corner there. And now we're going to come up here, and we're going to match the top one. So I have a really nice match along here. I'm going to secure it in just a few more places. I don't need to have a lot of glue on there, just a touch. And there's several types of glues that, glue sticks that you can use, or you can even use some um, clear glue that needs to be, that you can use to heat, that you can uh, heat set it with your iron. Okay, so now we're going to start sewing here, and I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to start off with a little piece of paper because it's a little bit harder to get a hold of that piece. And I'm going to start, get that lined up perfectly. Okay, before I get to that stack seam, I'm going to make sure my threads are out of the way. Then I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to grab my stiletto here and point to this. I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to make sure that right at that seam there that it's still tucked and I'm going to sew right to the edge of it. I don't want to sew over that seam. When I'm about a stitch away from the seam, I'm going to hit my reverse stitch on my machine and go backwards. What that's going to do is hold that bottom piece of fabric that's under there from sliding. And now I can flip this piece back up over the top and sew. Then we're going to do the same thing on the one underneath it. And I'm going to make sure that it's locked together and I'm going to sew towards the seam and hold on to it with my stiletto so it doesn't move. And about an, a stitch away from that, your seam allowance, you're going to hit your reverse button, go back, and then you're going to fold that seam back over the top. And then I like to sew forward and see if I actually, and open it up and see if I match them. And it is, it's a perfect match. I like that. So I'm going to just continue. And if I missed it, then I go back and fix it before I finish sewing. Now down here, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to kind of fold that back and let those tuck inside each other so you have opposing seams now and I'm going to sew until I'm about one stitch away from this seam the stitch from your other seam then I'm going to hit my reverse button back it up and then flip it back over and hold that down with your stiletto and sew right over the top
And we're gonna check that one. Good job. All right, so now we have matching seams there. So I'm gonna look at my instructions and see which way to press it. And this one tells me to press it towards the D2R group, which is this direction. So when I put my starch on, that just opens up those seams really nice along where we've done all of the stack seams. And then I'm going to run just a little bit of starch up here. Now we're going to go to the iron, and I'm going to grab this piece and iron that at the same time. Okay, we're back from the ironing board. Now, see how my uh, lines are pressed? You can kind of see the seam allowance where it's all pressed that way. When I did that stack seam and this one, it's the same everything's going the same direction. I know that it might be kind of hard to see what I was doing there but we do have another video and we'll attach the information where you, it's a close-up of the camera right on the machine when we did a stack seam and you can reference that if you were not able to follow what I did when I was showing you how to do that stack seam. All right. So something else I want to bring to your attention is this line right here does not match up with this line, okay? Um, they weren't separated that way. This is what we call an S-curve. And an S-curve is basically broken into two curves. So what I'm going to do is we find we're going to match up all of these pieces and we're going to find the transition point. And the transition point on this S-curve is right here and there's a TRP line there. And that's gonna match up right there. So I'm gonna take a, my fingers right there, and there's my um, quarter inch. And so that line is going to, those two spots are gonna crisscross, okay, like an X seam. Then you're gonna start sewing there, and we're gonna sew from here out to here, then we flip the piece over, we come back and we start here and we sew from there to there. And that's the way we do all of our S-curves, right? Before I do that S-curve, I'm going to actually sew this piece on. No, actually my instructions tell me to sew that S-curve first, so we're going to get that out of the way. And I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right across the top there, and then I'm going to grab a pen, we're going to flip that over, we're going to turn this just a little bit, and remember I want it to come in about a quarter of an inch to where I can hit my quarter inch seam here, so when I bring this in, I'm a quarter of an inch from the edge, and when I open it up, I'm going to hit right onto that seam there, okay? And that's where your transition mark is. Now, after we get that done, we're going to come over to the next one. And these two pieces, though, these are TRP lines. And I've actually just stitched them with a, just the needle rather than thread, because I'm working with batiks and there it shows up really well with our batiks. And then we're going to flip this back along the edge. And I'm going to match up my edge. It's a nice square corner there. And then we're going to work that back to our TRP line to where that lays down really nice. Now, when you're working with these, sometimes you're going to find a little bit of fullness in there. And it's just because you've lifted the fabric several times and it's all biased and so it has a tendency to start stretching on you. If it stretches, just take, glue it the best you can, then go to your iron and steam it 
and it'll steam it nice and flat for you so you'll have a perfect fit. All right. So we're going to start sewing at the pin here and I'm just going to start sewing just a little bit over so that I can do an overlap right through that area and we're going to sew to this edge and I'm going to clean that little edge up right there. It's kind of got a wowie in it. There we go. So I'm going to start on the this side of my pin and I'm going to take two or three stitches then I'm going to pull that pin out and continue sewing. Okay. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to flip it over. I'm just going to clip off these threads right here. We're going to flip it over and we're going to find the TRP lines. Put a little bit of glue there. We'll match that up. And then I'm going to finish gluing the raw edges back to where I'm going to join it. This end. Here again, I'm, when I sew off of this, I'm gonna, I want to try to hit that line right there on that point. So one of the things I can do is right before I get to that, my machine, the, sometimes the fabric will move underneath the pressure foot. So a lot of times I'll just take a piece of paper and put down right underneath it before I get to the end. And I have a little piece of paper here that I can use. There's a little bit better one. Start there in the middle, and we're going to overlap those stitches by three or four stitches. Just slip that little piece of paper under there and it'll trap through there and your pressure foot won't, your feet dogs won't grab that bias. And now you can slowly sew right off that point. It came out right on the point like it was supposed to. And now I'm going to look at what my Pressing and on this one it has me pressing this in so I'm gonna tear that little piece of paper off And I'm gonna quickly put a little bit of glue there and I like to do it for a couple reasons because I'm getting old and by the time I read my instructions and then get over to my ironing board, I forget which way I'm supposed to press. So if I'll glue down my edges on a couple of ends, then I'll remember which way I'm supposed to press them over there. So here we go, we're going to do this one as well. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there. I'm just, I don't want a lot there, just a touch. Because when you have really light fabric, sometimes that glue will show. So you just want to put a little bit right along the edge of the seam. Now, I'm going to do my pressing on that. After I get, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to sew this piece. And then we'll go back to the iron and we'll get all of that pressed down. All right. So, on this one, I have two, 
TRP lines that have to match, all right? Unfortunately, and I don't know why, but for some reason Bradley has this one off. And so we're going to circle that in your instructions so that you can see where it's off. This one is correct, so if you look, you're going to have just a little bit of space in there. But this is the one that he has off is going to come right out at that line there. So anyway, on occasion, we'll get one of them <clears throat> out of the wrong spot. And we're sorry about that, but we can't do anything about it now other than tell you to watch out for it. This one is correct. And I'm just going to put some glue along this edge, even though I know that those aren't going to match. But at least I know about where it needs to be. And this, we're going to match up here. And then this one, I was about a half inch off on that, so I'm just going to place that. And then I'm going to double check and make sure that it works out just fine with this and if I look at that that is going to I do have that in the right spot there all right so we're going to glue that then we're going to go to this piece And you're only going to find that happen on the one on this one section because the other sides match up perfectly. So I don't know how we managed to miss that one, but we definitely missed it. And so this seems just a touch loose right there. So what I'm going to do is go to my iron and I'm going to steam that. Okay, so I steamed this down so it lays really nice. You guys haven't seen me use very many pins when I assemble this because I use so much glue. But on occasion you'll get a couple seam that just don't want to lay down very well for you. And if you find that it, they won't lay down, then just come back and slip a few pins in there to keep that so when we lift it they don't pop, the glue doesn't pop loose for you. So we have this all in position, and now we're going to finish this, glue this last piece. I'm going to start with a little piece of paper. so that I could sew right onto that tip. So here's this tip. Don't just veer off like this. You need to be right out to that tip. So when we press it, it creates a straight line. And this particular seam gets pressed back this direction. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue under this end here and get that stretched out so it lays nice and straight along that edge before I go to my iron. This piece came out nice. We'll pull the paper off. We're going to grab our starch pan. that starch right down on that curved seam. And then we're going to do the ones on the top. And all you 
you have to do is just press on the tip of this and more the starch comes out for you. And you can replace these little tips in here. And we'll give you the information on who this comes from. All right, I'm going to go press this. And there's part of our border section. So now we're going to go back and we're going to do the border section for the other piece. My table wasn't big enough to do them both at the same time. is going to show you how to work with your applique sheets. So when you get your sheets, you're going to have four of these sheets together. And what you're going to do is just take one of the sheets and you're going to number these pieces to match what's on your newsprint. So when you get open up your newsprint sheets, there's a whole bunch of numbers on these pieces and you want to be able to match those so that you know which ones go where. Then after you get that done, you're going to actually pop out all of your pieces. And I like to actually use a rotary cutter, but I don't have a rotary cutter with me right at this moment. So see how I'm just taking my finger and I'm popping each one out like that. Okay. And then we're going to pop this one out. Now, don't throw these sheets away. After you get this popped out, you want to keep them. Because this is your template for putting these flowers back together. If you throw it away, you'll never be able to get the flowers back together the way they're supposed to fit. All right. So I'm just going to lay this on here like that. And I've already made my pieces, but normally I would have the newsprint next to me. And after I get all of my applique turned under, which I sh have showed you guys how to do your turn under applique, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over to the back side like this, all right? And I'm going to find my pieces. So this is my number 39 piece here. And then we're going to find my 40, which I didn't number mine, but this one goes here, so that one is that piece. And then this one falls in here, this one is here, and this one's like that, okay? Now I'm going to grab my glue pen, and we're going to glue these edges where I don't have things turned out, turned under. So I have these pieces like this. I'm just going to move them up and I'm going to get this fit in here just like that. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back here. Actually, I'm going to do, you kind of have to look at this and see which pieces go under. So I'm going to move this one out and I'm going to glue this edge right along here because that fits in there like that and then I'm just going to tuck this one up right like that and overlap the places where I didn't turn under and when you're building your applique pieces you're going to have to pay attention to that where you have you can tell I've turned this under and this edge isn't turned under but how do you know which ones to turn under so the way I figure it out is I look at my piece like this and before I tear it apart I kind of look to see okay this is one overlaps this piece and this one so I usually will put a little mark here and that tells me not to turn under that edge and so I would take this one and mark here and that would tell me not to turn under that edge and you can just kind of mark it a little bit more so this one I'm going to put a mark here and here, which means that I'm not going to turn under any of that edge. Do you see what I'm saying? So now, when I go to glue these pieces back together, I have my finished edge on the top and the raw edge that I didn't turn under on the bottom. 
And now I just lay that back in there. Now this one's going to slide underneath there. So I'm going to pick that out and then I'm going to take my glue and glue the back side of that and then slide it back underneath there and get it positioned. And there we go. And then on this one, I can just do that one right there. And then this is going to come in. And then we're going to go like that. Now, I have to do this whole edge. I'm running out of glue. If I can get enough on here to finish up. And then I'm going to place this back in position. And then I'm going to lift up that whole flower. Place that on there like that. So now when I flip it over, my flower is the same size as the shape of that paper. And that way I don't have to worry about it coming out as different sizes. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So if I look at this, these are my pieces. So this one I had numbered because I didn't know if I'd remember which pieces go. So on this one, this is folded under, so I'm going to put some glue on it. And then I'm going to slip it in place. There, the way it's supposed to fit, and then I'm going to find number 20. And we're going to put some glue on this one, and I'm going to get that set over like that. And then my 21 goes underneath, so I'm going to put the glue under there, get that in position, lift that, slip that. There. Then we have 24. 24 is the one that's turned under. So you're always putting the glue on the back side of the one that's turned under. And then you glue the raw edge to that. And we're going to take the next piece here. We're going to slip that piece underneath there. Right. so now this is a good time to come in and actually clean off those edges instead of after you've glued them all together and they're drying. So you can kind of keep those edges and if you can tell that this one's a little bit short, so I'm going to actually move, reposition this one down just a little bit. And then I'm going to check my piece, make sure it's still fitting, and it fits really nice in there now. And now we're going to take this piece, we'll put glue on the back of that, and I'm going to position that and kind of get that hold on to it. And then we're going to take this and slip it on top. Need a little bit more glue on the back of this piece. It's not wanting to stay. There we go. And now we have our other flower. Now, one thing I do want to mention is in the process of doing this, this is for machine applique, the way I'm going to show you how to do the machine applique. Um, if you end up with a little bit of messy glue and stuff on top of your pieces when you're done, just leave it there until you get it actually applicate onto your quilt. And then again, you can just take that little Clorox wipe and wipe the top of that off and it'll dissolve that glue without having to throw a wet wash rag or something. It's just a little bit of moisture and it'll clean all of those spots of glue off for you and clean it right up. 
All right, so we are now ready to put it onto our top. Um, I want to go over how to set your applique up on the, for the big border sheets because you have to make sure you get the pieces right where they're at, especially if you're doing like the digitized uh, designs. So if you look at your sheets, there's two sheets that I'm working with the LP60. Um, it has the whole layout on this sheet and then it has some lines that kind of help you see where you need to lay your pieces. All right. Um, the very first one I did, I did it wrong, so I had to pull everything off and then start over because I didn't start up in this corner the way I should have. So I do want to go over that so that you understand that. Um, the, the other thing um, we're going to go over is, we, I showed you guys in one of our other videos that we have these light tables. There we go. Right, so you're going to want this light table, and then you're just going to lay your uh, sheet over the top of it. Um, remember, I'm going to put some uh, repositionable glue on the back of it because then my paper's not sliding on and off. And even though it gets on the glass from my light table. It's fine because it washes right off with our Clorox wipe. You just have to rub it for a few minutes and then it's, and it's clean. So I'm going to take this and slip it basically like this to get you started. And then we're going to take our sheet, uh, piece here. And you have your seam that goes down like this. And then we also have this marked on the sheet as well. So you want to match both of those up. And this line here, right here, this is the edge of your quilt, right? So you're going to take this and set it in here like that. And get this lined up. And I'm going to slide it over just like about a quarter of an inch. There we go. So I have about a quarter of an inch overlapping that, but on the outside, I'm pretty much right on that line. Okay? And then I can see if my line's matching up. Now I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to put some repositionable glue on the top of the paper right here where my applique is not just so that I can kind of, it'll hold that in place. And then I'm going to line it up with the other, this other black curved line which matches up with this, okay? We have a really pretty nice match, okay? And once I get that, I'm just going to kind of push that down. Now, the other thing you're going to use is you want to take and use your um, applique sheet, and we're going to slide it underneath this. And the reason why is because if I just start putting my U or my um, Roxanne's basic glue on the back of my fabric, the newsprint, it starts soaking through because you're going to need quite a few pieces, uh, quite a bit of glue on the back of these, and it soaks through and then I have to clean all of that newsprint stuff. So I just found that if I'll take this and slide it in between there, that it, the newsprint is now separate and it doesn't matter how much glue I get onto my back of my pieces. So before I do that though, I still need to come in and I need to put my repositionable glue on this, otherwise it's going to slide all over on me as well. And again, when we're done, all we have to do is just go through 
with our Clorox wipes and just wipe this down and it just, that stuff comes right off. So it's really nice. So I'm going to put this back now and I'm going to start up in this, at this end and move my sheet so that it's over the top of as much of my applique as I can. And then I'm going to put this back down and now my Nothing's going to move on me. So now I'm able to slide this sheet just by lifting it, and I don't have to worry about my fabric moving. So we're going to take this and move it just a little bit further. And then we're going to grab all of our flowers. And I kind of like to lay the flowers out a little bit on here so that I can kind of tell... Um, which pieces have to go on first. So this one I believe goes down in here and this one goes, there's another one for that spot. This is my big flower. It's always easier to find the way the flowers go than it is the stems. And this one goes here. My little dot goes there. We have that flower is going to go here, this one goes here, and that one goes there. And this leaf fits right in that spot. This stem fits with that one. And let's see if I can get my light a little bit lighter. That one's going to go right in that spot. This one. It's going to go into this one, and then I have a leaf here, and, and this just kind of helps me get things lined out, and then this one comes in here like that, all right? And this little flower goes over here like this. Okay, so that's kind of the area in which everything's going to go. Now I have to kind of look at it and see, well, which one's going to fit underneath it? And this one's actually going to be the very first one that I put on here. And i got to grab my little scissors. And what I want to do is take my glue, and I like to just have a cup and see how I have a uh, Clorox wipe in the bottom. And then I just put my glue inside there, and that keeps the tip moist as I'm working on this. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to put my glue right down the back of this. And I'm going to put just a little bit on the fabric as well. And then we're going to kind of set this in place, and you can match that right up where it goes. And you're going to find that most of our stems are longer than what they need to be, but it allows you to adjust them just a little bit, all right? Because if you don't get your, your pieces perfectly set, then it gives you a little bit more to play with. And I'm going to just take and clip this off so that I don't have a lot of overlay there. And then this one's going to get clipped off like about right there. Okay. Now that I have that piece on, I can come up here and I'm going to put glue on the back of my stem. Get that in place. Or that, my leaf, that's not a stem. Then we're going to do our flower. And on the back of my flower, I have quite a bit of excess fabric. And so I'm going to just kind of clean that off just a little bit. So that if my quilter decides she wants to come in here and quilt in that little piece, she doesn't have to go through 20 layers of fabric. Okay? And then we're just going to, when you put that glue on, try to stay away from any uh, places where you're going to do applique. Because your glue dries really hard. And it's very easy to break a needle when you hit that hard glue. So this is for machine applique the way I normally do it. 
Now I'm just going to take that and position that flower. Okay. And then we're going to take this one. And this one, actually, I don't want to do that one yet because I need to put my stems down. So this stem is going to go right here. fits over the top of that. everything glued on here so it's ready to go to the machine and do my machine applique. So now what I want to do is show you guys how to clean up all of your mess. The first thing we're going to do is pull our sheets off and this has got sticky stuff all over it, but I wouldn't throw it away. I would just find a place to put it and um, with the sticky stuff on it, but don't fold it up or then you won't be able to pull it apart. So you're going to have to find a place to just hang this until you know that your quilt is done. Now I'm going to take my sheet here and I'm just going to grab my Clorox wipes here. And all I have to do is just let this get it wet and let that glue dissolve just a little bit and just rub it until it's clean. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the back side of it. You want to clean that repositionable glue off of your tools because it will collect dust if you leave it on there. Okay, so we're nice and clean and you can feel when just by rubbing your hands over that there's no more stuff on it. So I'm going to lay this off to the side. And now we're going to do the same thing with our table. Our light table here needs to be all cleaned off. And you can, if you turn it on, you can see that you're getting the, all of those little specks of glue actually show up. And at some point you're going to want to throw that one away and pull on a clean one until you don't see any more specks on it. And then you have a nice clean table.
We appreciate you turning in for this final work sessions for the Valley Blossoms quilt. Remember, if you are doing digitized embroidery options, however, you will need to join us on July 25th where Vanessa Fromm will give you a wonderful introduction to digitized embroidery and quilt works patterns. While this information presented will use Valley Blossom components, it will be a great learning tool for other designs that use digitized embroidery and our collaborative efforts between Fabric Confetti and QuiltWorks.com as well. If this is your last workshop with QuiltWorks on Valley Blossoms, we would love to have you send us a picture of your finished quilt. You can do so either by sending us an email or posting it to the QuiltWorks support network. To find more of QuiltWorks.com on social media, we encourage you to follow our newsletter, our various social media pages, and our YouTube channel. Also, check out Quiltster on Facebook and on YouTube as well. We are looking forward to releasing a wide range of instructional and information videos over the next six months as many of our workshops have been canceled and interacting with our customers is key to ensuring success on our patterns. We hope you join us for these additional events and that the information presented in this work session has been valuable for you. You might also check out our other currently posted tutorials on our playlist section of our YouTube channel. One additional work session is there for a design called Amethyst. The others are tutorials on some of our introductory designs as well. Again, thank you for joining us from Judy Judell and Vanessa Fromm whom you'll meet on July 25th and the QuiltWorks.com staff.